Well, good morning and welcome to Elmhurst, Illinois. Uh, today's talk is going to be about marketing and marketing manipulation. Um, I've touched on this before in some of the rants, the raves, the talks. Uh, I picked this location to start because this is how I got involved in marketing. If you're from Elmhurst, Illinois and you're ancient like I am, you might remember there used to be a building here. I'm in the uh, art museum parking lot. Uh, straight ahead of me is the Elmhurst post office. And in this empty piece of grass here, there used to be this two-story building that had parking underneath. Does anybody remember that? Well, what it was is a friend of mine, his dad was in market research. And this guy found out that I was interested in television. And when he found out I was interested in television, he said, you know, I might have a job for you. Would you be interested in videotaping my focus groups? Well, at that point in time, I didn't even know what a focus group was. Uh, but I knew what money was, and this guy was willing to pay me, and uh, he actually set me up with the first equipment. Uh, and then I started getting more and more into it and buying my own equipment, and uh, altogether, I think there was a dozen times I worked for him. Now, what you do in uh, market research, uh, a focus group, is you pre-select your people, you usually have several groups, uh, you try to get groups in uh, based upon what your instinct, your gut, your science is telling you. Like you might want to have one group that is just middle-aged female. You might want to have one group that is just uh, single young males who are teenagers, uh, so on and so forth. Ahead of time, you work out your questions. Because what a focus group is, is idea harvesting. You're harvesting ideas, and what you do with those ideas when you finish is you go back and you listen to the tape, uh, you look at your notes, you uh, analyze what all these people just told you. You analyze it, and then you come up with a report that you present to your client. Now, I'll give you an example. Now, back in, uh, this must have been 1979, 1980. Uh, he got a job, a contract with um, a computer software company, which was, in those days, kind of rare. This was a consumer software company. And consumer... Uh, usage of stuff and it was such a it was so prehistoric in those days his job was to figure out how people wanted to buy their software do you want to buy your software in a box with a lid do you want to buy it in a jewel case like you get your DVDs now how about a flip top box how about a large fold-out box that's extremely elaborate with an interior holder well that's all these people wanted to know on this one uh, focus group and all my job was was panning the camera back and forth uh, the instructions were just keep the camera on whoever is talking so I'm in the so-called secret room uh, you have a uh, uh, what do you call it a two-way mirror the people who are having their brains harvested they're isolated in the room with the leader of the group, the marketing research guy. But usually the client and a couple other people and a person running the AV equipment, they're behind the uh, two-way, one-way glass. What is that? Two-way, one-way? Uh, and they are listening. And the guy with the TV camera, his whole job, just pan the camera back and forth. I was quite good at that. I mean, when it's on a tripod, how can you go wrong? So it really didn't involve a lot of brain work, uh, but the sessions would be two hours at a time. You're usually doing two sessions an evening. So for like this software thing, I think I was over there for three nights, uh, six sessions total. Uh, it was quite a bit of time. Now, this guy I was working for, I won't uh, mention Roy's name, uh, 
he was quite good. He was quite good. And then since he was my friend's dad and the friend was interested in marketing, I was interested in marketing, you know, quite often the guy would talk about, you know, this, that, and the other thing. He never tried to give us the total education about what marketing is all about or anything like that. Uh, but he was glad to explain things uh, when we had specific questions. So I ended up doing that for him quite a bit. And then he... Uh, knew a couple other people he had partners and stuff they ended up hiring me for a couple other jobs and that's how i ended up getting my first bunch of equipment paying for my equipment uh on my channel you'll see some of the older stuff i've used i think i got a uh, a video about my three quarter inch player uh one of many i've gone through so <clears throat> The focus groups, the ideas, the idea harvesting, what is that about? Well, careful, careful listening. You need to be a good listener. You need to think of stuff ahead of time. Now, I told you the story, uh, the bar story, a few uh, talks ago. I, I learned this from the marketing genius and what I was doing is going into the bar and be sitting there and I'd be bored out of my mind or be some guy next to me pounding down drinks and across the days the years I learned that by saying just a few innocuous uh, things I could get a person's entire life story so the person would be talking and every once in a while I'd say something like oh is that so you know and then he'd want to give you more information and I'd say something like really and uh, they they're glad to talk they're glad to tell you about everything but my favorite was uh, they would get to something and usually I could care less but I'd say something like oh tell me about it yeah you need to listen and you need to do it in a way that does not have a bias uh, you want to get all of their information. So let's say you have a client, uh, you're doing soup, and uh, the client is just trying to figure out what the market's like. Well, if you go in there and you reveal to the people in the focus groups that you're kind of down on uh, powdered or dry soups, well, the people in the group are going to pick up on it really fast. So you don't offer your own opinions you offer open-ended questions you try to avoid yes or no questions an open-ended question what happens there is people will volunteer information to you okay so what does this mean what's this go back to advertising campaigns when you or anybody volunteers these ideas to the marketing wizards they are going to go back, take the information, and they are going to custom build a media campaign aimed at you. Okay, so you ever wonder about, you know, all those cat food ads and all the cute cuddly cats? Well, they're going to uh, use that as a manipulation. How come they know it works? Well, it's tried and true uh, science. Uh, years ago, there was a guy by the name of Bernays, and uh, he wrote a book, and that became a documentary, and the title is eluding me right now. Uh, but he was kind of the father of modern market research, and what he was able to do was take a lot of the uh, questions, break it down into a mathematical methodology, and then by compiling a lot of the anecdotes, he was able to create um, a listing of generalized patterns in terms of the way people think and react. So he was able to uh, take information and then turn it around and use it to manipulate your typical consumer. Okay, again, going back to you, what does that mean? Well, that means that when you go into the grocery store, or you watch TV, or you open up some printed matter, uh, all that advertising there, 99% uh, of it was very well thought out and designed, 
it's also these days built with a lot of uh, additional marketing methodology within it if you go back a hundred years ago you know in the 1920s there was a lot of popular culture there was a lot of popular marketing but popular mass media marketing was brand new they, that was the radio days and lots of newspapers lots of magazines uh, pre-tv uh, they would take the information Taylor made the commercial but in those days, the people hadn't gone through, uh, they hadn't been exposed to mass marketing the way we are today. So the typical consumer from 100 years ago is gonna be naive in the ways of marketing as compared to the modern consumer. So, in other words, as marketing advertising has evolved, uh, the marketing advertising people have taken steps to uh, work that into the equation. Uh, any automatic resistance, suspicion of, uh, adverse reaction to market-directed manipulation. Yeah, they got that all worked in there, too. Pretty much everything you view or see that's mass media, they've gone through all these steps. Uh, it is them trying to get you to do something. Anybody remember uh, the scientist Pavlov and the dog experiments? He was the guy that would ring the bell anytime he gave the dog food. And what he learned was, uh, the dogs began to salivate at the sound of the bell even when no food was offered. Yeah, think about that. Uh, that's actually a human reaction too. You can train uh, a human being to salivate. And salivate, I'm not just talking about food, but I'm talking about all the other stuff out there, you know, uh, uh, a popular movie, uh, a popular drink, uh, popular clothing, uh, uh, popular music. It's all being used uh, in manners to manipulate you, to get you to give up your hard-earned money. And marketing could also be known as revenue extraction. So we really haven't talked too much about the gimmicks, but yeah, there's a lot of it going on right now. Uh, the coronavirus thing has uh, some old businesses changing their uh, the way they're trying to get at you. We've always had the bottom feeder companies that want you to sell your gold and silver and family heirlooms. Uh, and now they're doing the same old shtick it get, except they work the coronavirus into it. Um, there's a lot of companies that are showing the flag and it's like us here at the ABC company are standing behind you in these times of trouble. You know, uh, my own heart tells me they could probably care less but in terms of staying fresh in the news cycle, yeah, uh, there's a lot of these products and companies, they absolutely depend on reminding people every other second of the day that there's a need for them. A good example would be soda. Uh, everywhere you turn in society, there is some sort of soda uh, pop advertisement. It's got to the point where collecting the old advertising is a lucrative endeavor and the uh, marketing is so sophisticated it goes beyond the major media and it ends up on stuff like, you know, billboards and napkins and coasters, anything you can imagine. Soda. Uh, politics. Uh, I try to stay away from the politics when I do my talks. I mean, folks, you guys are going to get worked up enough without me saying who my preferred candidate is. Um, 
you know, I will just say this. If Alf Landon had been elected back in whatever it was, 1936, the world would definitely be a better, different place right now. Okay, so the politics, uh, how do they do it? Well, mostly the manipulation is with fear. They do have focus groups. They do polling. Uh, they are picking people's brains apart uh, to see what activates them. What is... Uh, what's going to make uh, Mr. and Mrs. America react? Well, one of the best things you can do is fear. Uh, you have no future with the other guys. You know, there'll be no social security. There'll be no society. There'll be no country. Uh, they're going to completely change the political landscape and the uh, form of government will change into something completely different and foreign and alien and totalitarian and there'll be tyranny everywhere uh yeah so fear sells a lot uh most people because they're passionate about their politics they let themselves lose sight of being objective and critical thinking you know, this is, a lot of this is stuff that we covered in grade school back at the old Yorkfield School in South Elmhurst back in the 60s and 70s. In those days, they did have classes, uh, parts of classes like social studies, where they would review uh, the tactics of manipulation, the strategy of manipulation. The electioneering and the political stuff that used to be something that was only done around the campaigns around the election uh, but now it's become full-time work for a lot of people and the sad truth in our country is it just never stops and since it's uh, comes from marketing and not statesmanship there's a lot of politicians who make incredibly bad mistakes in the way they go after their fellow countrymen in an attempt to gain office. Yeah, it's sad. Uh, one thing you probably will not see in marketing, you'll see it a little in those focus groups, is uh, identifying what we have in common and I keep going off on this over and over again. Uh, if you really want to spoil somebody's party and when they get going on the politics, uh, force them into the corner where you uh, ask them what everybody has in common with each other. Yeah, you know, the vast majority of people in this country, uh, they want to have some sort of family, they want to have some sort of home life, they want to have freedom, they don't want to worry about food, they want to have a good education for their kids, they want to have a shot at the American dream. Most people, you know, they don't want that guarantee, they just want to know, hey, you know, there's a chance, there's a hope out there. Uh, that's a lot of stuff in common that we have. Um, but when you're dealing with marketing, politics, and things like that, they don't dare mention it because it's counterproductive to what they want to do. What is it they want to do? Identify differences. So anytime you're listening to a politician or you got your ad on for breakfast cereal or something, they are going to work very hard to tell you what the differences are. We have a lot of generations of Americans, and worldwide, uh, that's what they've been trained. It's become part of the DNA. It's become part of the natural instinct, you know. Uh, birds have known how to make nests for uh, eons, and uh, human beings, it looks like, are going to be always dependent upon some sort of... Uh, marketing, advertising, spiritual advisor to tell them if it's good to eat or think or, you know, drink, whatever. A lot less trains these days. Uh, we should be seeing the beginnings of baseball season here in Elmhurst and the parks are empty. The uh, exercise, town exercise place is coming up on the right. Uh, it's called the courts because of... Uh, the tennis courts and racquetball courts in there.
that's probably going to go away in a few years. Uh, you know, local governments have marketing too. Uh, they try to lead you in certain directions. Uh, and the sad thing about that is in the old days, people would trust the town fathers to, uh, you know, take the town in the direction it needed to go. There'd be talk about the water supply or the fire department or the police or something, fixing potholes, catching the stray dogs. Uh, but we've kind of gone away from that. Elmhurst has a village manager. We actually, city manager, we actually have two city managers. Uh, they are the professional side of the town where their job is strictly to run the city uh, and they don't get involved with politics. We have a mayor and we have a town council with aldermen. Uh, they're supposed to uh, debate and talk about the overall strategic direction of the town, but when the council and the mayor makes a decision, uh, they don't actually go out to the streets and implement the decision. They don't talk to the fire chief or the police chief or public works. Uh, it's the village manager who actually takes care of that. So every once in a while you'll have a big project and uh, DuPage County was bringing in the lake water back in the mid 80s. And there was a lot of people convinced we did not need lake water. So there needed to be an education campaign. And since the vast majority of people pretty much agreed that water is a rather important thing to have, uh, getting the education campaign up and running, it wasn't much, it wasn't very sophisticated. Uh, basically all it was was the city using charts and diagrams to explain that, hey, uh, we've already drill, drilled down over 1,500 feet. The deeper we go, the deeper we pump, the more it costs plus the quality of the water declines the deeper we go. Uh, getting into lake water, you know, people were resistant to having the city of Chicago uh, do stuff. We got a fire truck coming up Spring Road here. You know, they were uh, resistant to bringing in the lake water, but uh, all the different governments, not all of them, but a lot of governments around DuPage County, they uh, educated their citizens, they explained why it's important, and firefighting is important too. Oh. an ambulance call back in the neighborhoods here. So, yes, government did uh, bring in their own form of light manipulation, uh, and that was advertising. Um, you know, all these signs you're seeing as we drive, uh, everything, all the advertising, you can think of it as manipulation. Once you think of it as manipulation, that helps you to build up a resistance to uh, advertising, marketing, that sort of thing. It gives you a chance to, uh, gives you a respite to think and to analyze and to process. Uh, the reason I've been telling you about all of this today is there's an incredible amount of manipulation going on right now. Uh, the political side of it is absolutely crazy. Uh, the marketing side with actual products isn't quite as bad, uh, but it's still there. And if you truly want a future of freedom, uh, and you agree with those ideas, you know, family, school, job, career. If you agree with that, then you want to think about the way people are attempting to manipulate you. Okay. <coughs> I am eastbound on Vallette. 
still in Elmhurst, made it all the way to the north end of town and back. This is Bryan Street, Bryan named after the guy that named the town, uh, Thomas Barbour Bryan. He's the guy that came up with the name Elmhurst. And here we cross the tracks again. Freeport Sub, Canadian National, Old Illinois Central. And there's this little bit of a jog here. Up on the left is where the bar of the office used to be, the empty lot on the corner. Always liked that one for a name. Talk about a manipulation. You know why the guy named it the office, you know. You're out there drinking at 7.30, you suddenly realize you're two hours late for dinner with the wife. Well, hell, you get on the phone, you dial it up, and you say, Oh, uh, sweetheart, uh, I'm really sorry, I'm, I'm late. Yeah, I'm still at the office. Manipulation can work for you, it can work against you. Uh, but you need to be aware it's out there. Watch your backs, folks. Stay healthy, tune in, check out the playlist, check out all the videos, and thank you.